Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and welcome to this video on the basics of data modeling. So this is going to be part of a series, just kind of going over some uh, data modeling basics. Um, but in this first video, we're going to establish sort of what is data modeling and some of the basic sort of challenges of data modeling. Again, if you enjoy these videos, make sure to hit subscribe, like, leave a comment, and uh, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Now, data modeling is all about trying to capture things that are in real life that we want to capture as data and discovering sort of what is the best way to describe it in terms of a set number of sort of properties. So, for example, um, if I'm tracking, let's say, students in a, a student in a classroom, okay, what are the relevant pieces of information? Okay, so in that case, I may want to know uh, their first name. I may want to know their last name. Um, I could ask for their age, but it might be better to use their birth date. Okay, so birth date, probably a better way to go. I can determine their age from that information. Plus, I can also then, you know, as a class, plan for their birthday. So that's probably a, a better piece of information to grab. Okay, now do I want the color of their mailbox? Mm, probably not. One, not useful for my particular application. Okay. And two, not really descriptive of the person, of the thing that this is. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe I would want their parents' name. So I might say, okay, uh, you know, parent, the name of parent one. and the name of parent two. Okay, you know, that way you capture different situations where maybe there's a, it's a single parent um, and all sorts of different types of situations. So I have two fields. Um, cool. You know, and actually probably even better would be to probably name this field guardian one and guardian to. So that way you capture even a more broad set of possible sort of scenarios. Okay. Okay, so that way the information is, you know, in the spirit of the information you actually collect. Because what happens if they're being raised, child's being raised by their aunt or their uncle? Okay, there isn't really necessarily a tidy place, but if I put guardian one, guardian two, that's just gonna be, a, a, be able to capture the right information in more situations and not. So again, it's about sort of these sort of thinking through sort of the reality of the data you're collecting, um, but also thinking through the use of the data you're collecting. Because the idea, I don't necessarily want to have, you know, a separate parent column and guardian column, because oftentimes that data is the same data, like the parents are the guardian, and uh, that would be redundant. And not, not necessarily helpful, um, depending on the use case. In this case, if I'm a student, I, I really kind of care who's like, who's responsible for my students. Okay. Um, you know, I might care about their address. Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, you know, now I'm starting to think, was like, well, maybe I need information about those guardians. Okay. Then again, we'll, so we'll call this like my student sheet. So let me just rename the sheet. Okay. So maybe I, I want to insert some columns here, insert a column to the left or to the right. Okay, and this is gonna be like guardian one phone number. And this is gonna end up being guardian two. And so you can start seeing how this is gonna start exploding. Okay. So again, imagine I, I am a developer and I'm a developer who's developing an application to help teachers track their students. Okay. One of the things I'm gonna have to do is I need to understand the data. Okay, I need to understand sort of like this application is not just for the application to have this functionality, but when it stores the data to do that, it's going to store it in a way that's going to be useful for other applications later on as the application sort of expands use cases. So now I run into this point and I'm like talking to the, so basically I'd probably sit down with sort of the teachers and start asking the kind of information they want to grab. Now here I, I have a picture of a student, but this, this field and this field aren't information about particularly the student. So this is essentially really feel right here. 
okay? At least for the purposes of like the application, you know, where basically I can hey, track students and bring up students. Because what happens if I have like three students? Like let's say we have like Tommy Jones, don't worry about the birth date, you know, and they have their mom with their, with the same number, four, 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 and their dad who has the number five, 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 okay? And then we have Susie Jones. Okay, and they they have the same mom because they're, they're siblings. So that's the same information I caught twice. So one, I'm kind of capturing information that's not... Like, I do want to know who the Guardians are, and I do want the extra information about the Guardians. But by putting the information directly into my data model for students, um, I'm kind of duplicating the data. Okay? Which means, you know, I'm storing more information. And then what happens later on if, like... Dad updates their name, and they're now their daddy. Okay, I have to now make sure that I upload it. I update that in both of these cells here. Okay, or both of these rows. So these are the challenges when you have sort of like additional uh, dimensions to take care of. Okay, um, cool. So in that case, this is what we start exploring the concept of normalization. So I'm saying, okay, well, if I need to keep track of these guardians, okay, probably makes sense to put this kind of information about the specific guardians in a separate table. So we'll do, we'll create another sheet. So let me just make another sheet here. We'll call this the guardian sheet. This is, and again, these sheets are supposed to be analogous to like a table in a database. Um, students will say guardian. So in this case here, we would just have like name. So let's we'll actually say ID because I want to have a unique identifier of some sort to be able to refer to which guardian I'm talking about and then name and phone number. So now I can have ID one and then I can say, you know, uh, uh, name and I can say, okay, here, this is mom. Four, 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 and two is daddy. Five, 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 five. Okay, so now what I can do is I can now take go back to my student model, and I can reduce this. Now I can get rid of this these phone columns. Okay, so so far my data model is starting to look a lot better. Okay, it's a lot cleaner, and then instead of the, actually having the raw information here. Now I can just be like, okay, guardian one is one. So it's going to be the guardian with the ID of one and two. So now I can just go over here and I can be like, okay, well, um, you know, daddy changes their name back to dad. I only have to update it in one place, yet the information is still going to be accurately captured for both Tommy and Susie. Okay, because two is going to refer to two regardless of what daddy's name is or dad's name is. Okay. Wonderful, but what happens if you have a situation where they have three, four guardians, okay? So maybe, you know, there's just three or four people who happen to be the guardian of the child. They, they, they you know, maybe they, there's four aunts living in a house and they're all guardians of the child. Okay, what happens in that situation? Hmm. Okay, well then just having two guardian spots aren't really going to work here. Okay. So in that case, maybe what we do is we create an additional table. Okay. So I'll, I'll delete these two columns. Instead of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give each student an ID. So I'm gonna go create a new column here to the left and we'll give students an ID column. So we have one and two. And then what I can do is I can create a, another table that captures sort of the relationships between these. So I can sit there and say, hey, this is there's an ID for each relationship and then there's a student ID and a guardian ID. Okay, so now here I can just be like, okay, our first relationship is, you know, Tommy, who has mom as a guardian. And we also have, uh, you know, we also, Tommy also has dad as a guardian. Okay, and then we have Susie, who also has mom and dad as a guardians. 
Okay, and then theoretically here, I can kind of see all those relationships because I can go back, look up the student with a particular ID, and I can look up the guardian with that particular ID, and I know. So if there were six guardians, 20 guardians, 30 guardians, I can capture them all because each connection is captures one here. And then here I just worry about, hey, what information do I want about an individual guardian? And what information do I really want about an individual student? And I can capture the relationship between them here and sort of student guardian. So this, notice how like the the business, the model, so like the way the different properties that I use change as we started thinking more and more about the usage of the data and the possible scenarios. Okay, so this is why like data modeling is such an important task because oftentimes see at this level, just like changing it is really easy, but what happens if there was already a bunch of data there? Okay. I already had thousands of students and all their guardian information was in that student's sheet. And now I decide I want to change it because I, I want a more flexible data model. You end up with a much harder proposition because now you have to go back and then repopulate that data in the new model. Okay. So, which is why it's important to kind of do this kind of data modeling and thinking upfront when you're building applications, when you are engineering data for analytics, it's well, it's important. Okay, so again, it's just about sort of having this process. So that's what data modeling is. Data modeling is sort of thinking through sort of what are your different um, your different entities. So again, this case, you have students, guardians, and in this case, we have a relationship here. And these are all, these are two different types of entities that I'm tracking. Okay, so, so there could also be like events. Okay. So for example, I might have a separate field, a separate sheet that is, um, you know, detentions. So detentions isn't an, necessarily an object. I'm not, they're not a thing. Detentions, okay. But they are events that happen. So in that case, you know, I'm saying here and saying, okay, here's an ID for detention record. And there's going to be a student ID who is subject to that detention record. And then there is going to be a date of that detention. And, you know, uh, let's we'll just say um, infraction, like what did they do wrong? Okay. So there's like my data model for a detention, but that's falls sort of in the category of events. They kind of happen and they happen in a moment in time and I'm tracking them, you know, um, and the reason being is because the way you might process data that is sort of a thing is going to be different than the way you might process the data that is something that happened. So you got to think about sort of like what it is you're modeling. Okay. Is it a thing that's kind of like somewhat unchanging? It changes. And we'll, that's going to be a separate video, that whole conversation about changing uh, entities. But it could also just be events. So it's like it's not that any event doesn't really change. What happened happened but it can happen more than once. So you have to capture each time that it happens. Okay, so these, this is all within the realms of sort of the thought process of data modeling. And it doesn't matter what kind of database or data tools you're thinking through, thinking through how you're gonna shape your data and how you're going to break out your data into different blocks or different, again, entities, events, relationships, um, is gonna be pretty important. Okay, how kind of thinking through how all this connects. So um, that's this video, I'll see you guys in the next one.